your life. And when it comes to drugs and alcohol,
real concern that planted story is intended to serve a national purpose abroad um, came home and were circulated here and believed here because uh, this would mean that the CIA could manipulate the news in the United States by channeling it through some foreign country.
The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissent is a silent, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed.
suspect that there will be another attack on the United States. I have to assume that. The president has to assume that. terrorism. It was a despicable and cowardly act. We will find out who was responsible and hold them accountable. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future.
by those agencies that are supposed to be moving in here to assist us. In your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Chairman. I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area. So may I request that you not touch upon that, sir?
longer.
unidentified flying object and I've made reports on that a lot of times it was just a light in the sky that looks about like the moon that changed the colors and then disappeared and we never did identify what that object was
The distinguishing thing about the paranoid style is not that its exponent C conspiracies or plots here and there in history, but that they regard a vast or gigantic conspiracy as the motive force in historical events. History is a conspiracy, set in motion by demonic forces of almost transcendent power. And what is felt to be needed to defeat it is not the usual methods of political give and take, but an all-out crusade. The paranoid spokesman sees the fate of this conspiracy in apocalyptic terms. He traffics in the birth and death of whole worlds, whole political orders, whole systems of human values. He is always manning the barricades of civilization. He constantly lives at a turning point. It is now or never an organizational resistance to conspiracy. Time is forever just running out. As a member of the avant-garde, who is capable of perceiving the conspiracy before it is fully obvious to an as yet unaroused public, the paranoid is a militant leader. Nothing but complete victory will do. This demand for unqualified victories leads to the formulation of hopelessly demanding and unrealistic goals. And since these goals are not even remotely attainable, failure constantly heightens the paranoid's frustration, in turn strengthening his awareness of the vast and terrifying quality of the enemy he opposes. The enemy is a perfect model of malice, a kind of amoral superman, sinister, ubiquitous, powerful, cruel, sensual, luxury loving. He wills, indeed he manufactures the mechanism of history himself. He makes crises, starts runs on banks, causes depressions, manufactures disasters, and then enjoys and profits from the misery he has produced. The paranoid's interpretation of history is in this sense distinctly personal. Decisive events are not taken as part of the stream of history, but as the consequence of someone's will. A fundamental paradox of the paranoid style is the imitation of the enemy. The Ku Klux Klan imitated Catholicism to the point of donning priestly vestments. The John Birch Society emulated communist cells and quasi-secret operation through front groups. Spokesmen of the various Christian anti-communist crusades openly expressed their admiration for the dedication, discipline, and strategic ingenuity the communist cause calls forth. Paranoid writing begins with certain defensible judgments. The government really can read all of our emails. The CIA really did conduct mind control experiments on unsuspecting Canadian housewives. There really was a secret FBI within the FBI dedicated to destroying the American left. It then carefully accumulates facts, or at least what appear to be facts, and marshals these facts toward an overwhelming proof of the particular conspiracy that is to be established. It is nothing if not coherent. In fact, the paranoid mentality is far more coherent than the real world, since it leaves no room for mistakes, failures, or ambiguities.
full truth. And the administration tried to make sure that they wouldn't find it. Which means they tried to prevent the American people from finding the truth as well. that there's some major conspiracy I'm alleging is just sort of that's over the top. There's no major conspiracy here. It's very easy to control news. the First World War, officials of the U.S. government have encouraged conspiracy theories, sometimes inadvertently, sometimes intentionally. They have engaged in conspiracies and used the cloak of national security to hide their actions from the American people. With cool calculation, they have promoted official conspiracy theories, sometimes demonstrably false ones, for their own purposes. They have assaulted civil liberties by spying on their domestic enemies. When citizens cannot trust their government to tell the truth, they become more susceptible to that dread disease, conspiracism. They become less likely to trust their government to do anything, to conduct fair elections, say, or spend their tax money, or protect their children or their planet. The result is a profoundly weakened polity, with fewer citizens voting, and more problems left unaddressed for a future generation that is even more cynical about the possibility of reforms. We are all sufferers from history, but the paranoid is a double sufferer, since he is afflicted not only by reality with the rest of us, but by his fantasies as well. He has little real hope that his evidence will convince a hostile world. His effort to amass it has rather the quality of a defensive act which shuts off his receptive apparatus and protects him from having to attend to disturbing considerations that do not fortify his ideas. He has all the evidence he needs. He is not a receiver. He is a transmitter. Nine, six, Bravo, two, nine, Bravo, two, three, three. 